Hello, in this video I'm going to be talking about lymphovascular invasion, which you might see abbreviated LVI. Another thing to know is some pathology labs call this angiolymphatic invasion. They are exactly the same thing. Lymphovascular invasion and angiolymphatic invasion are the same thing. They have the same root words, which are blood vessels and lymphatics. Now, a lot of people hear LVI, and they think because it's got the word lympho in it that we're referring to the lymph nodes, and that's not the case. It's a really common misconception. Lymphovascular invasion refers to the normal tissue that's present in the surgical specimen that it's removed. So remember, the tumor cells grow within normal tissue, and normal tissue has lymphatics, normal tissue has blood vessels. If we see cancer cells that are from the tumor in the blood vessels or lymphatics in the normal tissue of the breast, that's called positive lymphovascular invasion or positive angiolymphatic invasion. There's also the possibility you might see extensive lymphovascular invasion or extensive LVI. And that's a whole different, it's sort of a different dose of angiolymphatic invasion. So I'm going to talk about what this means and how it affects treatment. You know, before I go on, I want to invite you to subscribe to our channel. We are always putting out new content, often in response to questions that you ask us in the chat box below. So if you have an idea for a video, give us a suggestion and the next thing you know, it'll pop up in your feed. We want to be responsive to you and your information needs. When we see this under the microscope, we do special stains of the tissue as we've talked about before in the pathology section of our playlist. We, the tumor is taken, put in paraffin, and then sliced into very thin uh, slices, put on a microscope and looked at under the microscope, and some stains are done. When we do stains that look for lymphatics and blood vessels, we can see the lymphovascular tissue and then see if there are cancer cells in there. As I mentioned, there will be those or there will not. And then there's also the possibility there can be many. What does this mean? What it means is that those cells in the tumor have access to normal lymphatics and blood vessels. And there is a slightly higher likelihood that those cancer cells can access other parts of the body. The biggest implication it has, however, is it indicates a higher risk of local and regional recurrence in the breast and in the lymph nodes. Its role in systemic disease is recently showing to be uh, the case, but is often drowned out by other characteristics, which I'll talk about in just a moment. But the biggest implication is if there's lymphovascular invasion, angiolymphatic invasion, in the breast tissue, that, and if you're borderline for radiation therapy, then we're going to lean more towards radiation therapy in people who have lymphovascular invasion as opposed to omitting it. The key thing is that lymphovascular invasion often travels with other key prognostic and predictive factors. And what I mean by that is, people with lymphovascular invasion are more likely to have grade three disease. They're more likely to have estrogen receptor negative disease. They're more likely to have positive lymph nodes. So it's rare that lymphovascular invasion is sort of the deciding factor. With, without that, we wouldn't have done it. It's rather, it can help push you over to the side where maybe you'll get the treatment that was being considered for omission, radiation therapy, for example. It plays less of a role in treatment decisions about chemotherapy, but it's generally seen in the community that people with lymphovascular invasion are more likely to have chemotherapy in part because it's high, associated with higher grade and other characteristics. We also know that lymphovascular invasion is associated with a higher recurrence score on the oncotype DX assay and other tumor genomic assays. So it's kind of a fellow traveler with other characteristics that make us want to recommend more rather than less treatment. If, you're, if you don't see any mention of lymphovascular invasion 
in your pathology report, it doesn't say whether it's not there or it's there. It's generally the case that it isn't there. But the standard pathology report worldwide needs to include some mention of lymphovascular invasion, whether there is or isn't. I mentioned extensive lymphovascular invasion. When we see extensive lymphovascular invasion, it means a lot of the blood vessels and lymphatics of the normal tissue in the breast have cancer cells in them. And you will see that that's associated, again, higher grade, more active features all the way around. And you will see people with extensive lymphovascular invasion much more likely to have radiation therapy, much more likely to have a completion axillary lymph node dissection, and much more likely to be offered chemotherapy. Its independence has only recently been emerging, and not all of us are convinced that it's an independent prognostic factor. I've covered a lot. If you are curious about whether or not your tumor has lymphovascular invasion, and you're wondering about how all the other characteristics of your tumor play a role in what your doctors recommend or might recommend when you see them, I'd encourage you to go to yerba.com and get your personalized yerba report. Your yerba report, unlike your portal, unlike some of the static websites that are available, takes your actual medical records, either that you give us permission to access electronically or that you upload. It takes all of those features, and then I'm doing this because it cross-references it with the latest medical evidence, and then creates a list of the types of treatments you might be offered, and the pros and cons, and what it is about your tumor that made that treatment particularly effective. If you get the premium version, you can ask us at Yerba unlimited questions. Although we are not part of your medical team, so some of the information we give you will be general information, uh, and it's not a second opinion. It's a really great way to get questions answered that perhaps your doctor hasn't had a chance to answer, or even just hearing it in a different way can be super helpful. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you again next time.